Hi all, this is Maria Clark at Sweet Willow Designs and welcome to my studio. Uh, this is pendant number eight in our series. I've got a couple more to go for a total of 10. Um, here are the tools and materials that we're going to be using. Um, I will be using a variety of jewelry making tools. Uh, I have a one and a quarter inch wood ball. I've got my little um, Harbor Freight drill here that I'm gonna use to drill a pilot hole um, to help me find the center. I've got my um, tools, my nail dotters. I will be using mostly nail dotters, but I'll also use one of my crochet hooks, and I'll show you that as we go along. I've got the paint that I'll be using. I'll be using the DecoArt Americana in purple pizzazz, saffron yellow, and titanium white. And of course, I've base coated this with um, the Americana chalky paint or the multi surface satin. I'll also be using the DuraClear, the uh, DecoArt Americana DuraClear gloss varnish. I'll be using some screw eyes that I'll show you a little bit later. And then I've got some chain, some jump rings, clasp, and this little toggle that I made. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in seeing the toggle. I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out, helps me bring videos, and use the links below. Thanks so much. So let's see how this comes together. I've got my... Um, uh, screw eyes and I just got these at Hobby Lobby uh, you can find these online and these are little screw eyes that will just screw right into the wooden ball and uh, these are 5 by 11 millimeter and I'm going to go ahead and drill a pilot hole now you can try drilling these into the ball but these are hardwood and so I found it a little bit difficult and I thought that if I drilled I'd be a little better I'm going to be looking for a drill bit that is actually smaller slightly smaller than the size of the screw um, because I want to have a tight fit. I may also put a little dab of glue. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my pilot hole drilled. I don't have to drill in very far, just a little pilot hole there. And then I wanna show you a technique for finding the center of uh, your ball and then also the, the midpoint. So I've got my pilot hole as my uh, starting point and I've got a little strip of paper it's probably about an eighth of an inch um, and I'm gonna go ahead and line this up I'll line it up to the center of that hole and then just carefully sort of smooth it around so that it meets up I'll mark it so I'll know the the circumference of my my ball and then I will fold it in half. I'm making myself a little marking tool, so I'll fold it in half to find the center point. And I'll just mark that with a pencil so it's easier for me to see. And then I'll fold in one end to the center, crease that, fold in the other end. And that's gonna give me the midpoint or the equator of, um, of my ball, my sphere could use this same technique for Christmas ornaments. I'll mark that so it's easy for me to see. Now what I'm gonna do is I am actually gonna use two screw eyes on this. Now you don't have to do this. I want to have a tassel, so I'm going to put a hole at the opposite side. So I've got my starting point. I'm gonna line that up. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and mark with my pencil Now these little equator points I don't really need at this point. I just want to show you how to mark those. Once I have my ball base coated, um, I could go in and put those marks on there so I could see where the, the, the equator point was. Now I'm just marking actually what the center is for my, uh, for my other screw eye so I have them um, on opposite ends. I'll drill, drill my little pilot hole of course. And then I want to show you that um, this particular project, because this ball is so small, really requires a lot of dry time. Dry time. So I've got a little ornament stand. I'm going to go ahead and put the screw eye in. And I'll just use a little paper clip that I'll bend out a little bit as a hanger. And that way I can hang it right on my ornament stand when I want it to dry. I'm going to go ahead and base cone it. And you see how with I, when I have that little screw eye and the hanger, I have something to hold on to. 
which is a little bit nicer. So I'll just go ahead and apply my paint. Now I take my paint out of the bottle that it comes in, I put it in another bottle and I thin it down slightly because I'll put several coats on and that's usually how I, I do it. I either use the DecoArt chalk paint or um, the multi-surface satin. This has got a couple of coats on it so it's ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and take that screw eye off and initially I'm going to use a little stand. I'm just using a bottle cap. One thing about these bottle caps is they have um, the little uh, plastic ridges and they're really rough so I went ahead and took that off, knocked that down with uh, with a, a scissors just so I wouldn't scratch my paint. And then I'm going to find the center of course and I'm just using my nail dotter so I'm using a fairly small nail dotter and this one is a four segment uh, mandala that I'll be making. I'm using my purple pizzazz and I'll just go ahead and put my four dots of course going nor north, south, east, west. And these are my starting points. I didn't feel like I needed any other marks on this particular piece but if you wanted to put the equator on or you wanted to put some other marks to help you as guidelines that's perfectly fine. And I'll just do north, south, east, west. I'm using a fairly small nail dotter uh, because this is a this is the, the um, top end of my ball. I love um, I really love the way these little mini pendants, uh, round pendants look. They're just so much fun. And then I'm going to go in, same size tool, and put another round in between. And I kind of get a little bit of a square uh, type of, of um, design there. And this is this will form the basis then of the rest of the design. Now I'm going in with my G6 four millimeter crochet hook. Now this will be the largest of the dots that I'll use and I'm going to be putting four dots down. I think this color is just gorgeous. I love this this uh, purple pizzazz. So pretty. Okay, we've got that down. Now I'm going to go in with the white and a very one of my very smallest tools, and I'm going to walk the dots around. Just kind of line it up there and walk around. You can see that just how my fingers are kind of holding this um, that I will quickly uh, get my fingers in the paint. So that's why this particular project has a lot of dry time. And I'll speed this up just a little bit. We'll get the first row of walking the dots on. At any rate, that's why I'm using that hanger because um, I need to set this aside and dry this at each stage. Okay, that's how we're looking so far. I'm going to go around with one more row, same size tool. And you decide as you're working your project how um, you know how far you want to go before you set it aside to dry. I'll do a little bit more and then I know I'm going to mess up the paint. 
Okay, G6, four millimeter again, right in that little valley. I'll drop another row of these purple pizzazz. And there we go. I've set that aside to dry. And now I'm going to pick back up, same pattern, fairly small size tool, and I will walk those dots around. And I'll go all the way around. Now on this next row, uh, do the same thing, go all the way around. Of course this is sped up. Alright, now at this point I'm going to go ahead and insert my paper clip and my screw eye and start using the hanger now. I've let that dry and now I'm coming in with my largest nail dotter and I'm going to drop three dots that kind of gently curve around that one uh, petal. And I'll do that all the way around. And now I'm going to do a bit of an arch here. You might not be able to see it, but I'm using that previous row, the three that I put down as sort of a guide, and I'm going to just sort of gently arch my dots around. Okay, and again, you know, you decide how far you want to go before you set that aside to dry. And that's the pattern. All right, this next, um, oh, I, I wanted to uh, show you that I kind of, I didn't film this actually inadvertently, but you'll see that I've got on that next row, I've got three dots and then I walk the dots around. And what I'm doing here is I'm just marking the top. I'm going to start to do some swooshes, so I'm just marking where I want my top, top to start. And I'm using the saffron yellow and I'm placing my center and then my outside and I'm just gently following that curve on each of the outside, following the curve of the previous rows. And of course, those have all dried. And then I'll go in in the center and place another swoosh in the center. And that forms that sort of um, little bit of a scallop type design there. And I'll do that all the way around. Sped up, of course. Whoa. Gets a little jittery when um, I get the sped up and put my final one on. There we go. I love the pop of yellow. I set that aside to dry. 
and now I'm going in with my white and again just like I did on that previous row I'm going to gently follow the curve so I'm making an arch shape And I'll do that all the way around. And I'll do another row. I'm going to speed that up. This is sped up about five times. Okay. And give you a little bit of look at this pattern. And I'll let that dry. Coming back in with my G6 4 millimeter and the purple pizzazz. And drop in that. And then I will follow the same kind of rhythm that I've been following and I'll walk dots around. This one I will change up just a little bit but um, you'll see that I start off with walking the dots with the white. And now um, I'm only going to do one side, I think, first because of the paint. And I'll walk another row around of white. Now I'm going to be using the saffron yellow. And I'll walk the dots around. Now because this has further to travel, I'm using this, at the top there of that um, petal with the yellow, um, I place the same size dots, three, and then I'll start walking them just so I can make that paint, sure that paint travels all the way down. Okay, that's how our pattern's forming. And I will let that dry. Now I'm coming in with the purple. And here I'm going to do a little crown. So I've got three dots that form the top. And that's just to give a little variation to the pattern. So 
So a three dot crown and then I'll walk those dots around. And I'm just changing out how I kind of went about doing the same thing there so you can see there's different ways to do this. Okay, now I'm there at the center. I'm going to go ahead and put uh, this center as an orientation. So I'll just use my G6 and put my mark there. I don't know that I got it lined up exactly perfectly, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to be putting the tassel, and then I'm going to just poke it so I get the hole. There we go. Let that dry. I let all of that dry. And now I'm coming in with some swooshes at the base here, and I'll just use three swooshes. get that paint to travel down. So I'll put one in the center and then one on either side. I'll fill in a little extra paint there. Okay, kind of in the home stretch here. I'm using my largest nail dotter and I'm placing four dots where those um, last set of swooshes, the yellow swooshes, seem to start coming together to fill in a little bit of that space. Now again, if you didn't want to put the tassel at the bottom, you don't have to drill that last hole. You could just paint this and it would be beautiful. Um, I like the tassel. I like the addition of the tassel to bring some of that yellow color uh, down a little bit to lengthen the pendant. But of course, stop wherever you want to stop. Okay, and this is how the pattern looks. Isn't that pretty? And I will set that aside and make sure that that's nice and dry before I go on to start doing some of the top dots. I will do some top dots just to um, reinforce the pattern of the color. And here you see I'm just uh, using a very small nail dotter to get the top dots. <clears throat> I'm not going to show the whole top dotting process but give you an idea as to what I top dotted here so you can get a look at that. We'll do the small ones here. And then I'll go in with a larger tool. on the larger dots. So I'm using my largest nail dotter to just drop some paint. Okay, there's my top dotting. I went in on some of the dots with the, the yellow top dot and then another little bit of purple pizzazz. I didn't do that on all of them. Um, you can see that on the little three set of three there, I didn't put any additional top dots. I just put the yellow uh, just to sort of emphasize that a little bit. Isn't that pretty? The top view and then the side and then the bottom. Okay, now let's 
make the components, the jewelry components. So I've got this tassel. Now I did make this tassel. If y'all are interested in seeing some videos on how to do these tassels, just let me know in the comments and um, I will do a little demo on that. I think I have a real old video that shows how to do that when I was working with polymer clay. So for the necklace, um, I wanted this to be a little bit longer and I wanted to use a chain and that's the beauty of knowing how to make your own findings, your own components. I'm making sure that that, uh, f that the main jump ring that I'm going to use is going to fit my chain. Otherwise I've got some small jump rings here, I've got a clasp, and I've got the larger jump ring for um, the main bale. Let me get some of the stuff out of my way. I'm just using some simple chain. Uh, all the components of course match and I'll take my small um, jump rings. I think these are about four millimeter. Open them up and of course the right way to open them is to use two pliers and twist so you don't uh, take those jump rings out around. Put the end of my chain which I just cut off a longer length. I just measured out how much I wanted and uh, keeping in mind that my clasp is going to be about an inch. You can measure the clasp to see how much it's going to take up so you know how many inches and I think I end up with about 29 inches here. Kind of close that one up. That's the first part of the toggle clasp. And I'll go ahead and put the other jump ring on. Okay, twist it open. And just feed the other end and the other end of the toggle. You could of course use any kind of clasp you wanted. I just have these toggle clasps so I'll use that. You could also, depending on what your measurement is, you might not even need a clasp if it fits over your head. It's kind of up to you how you might like to work this. Um, and then this is just simple little clasp. Okay, now you'll notice that I have varnished this. I used the DuraClear uh, gloss varnish and I did a couple coats. I like to thin mine out so I put it in my palette a little, just the barest bit of uh, water and uh, thin that down and I've got about three coats on. Now this is the tassel that I made and it's just got a simple loop so I'm opening that up by twisting it. I've put my, uh, my um, eye screws in and they're tight in there. Use a little bit of glue if you want to for extra security and I'll just thread that on and close it up. Okay, see I think it looks pretty with the tassel but of course you know it doesn't have to have a tassel. Now let's do the top, the necklace. I'm going to go ahead and open this uh, jump ring. I've already, you know, we put together the chain. So I'm just going to make sure my jump ring goes through. Now I'm going to go ahead and put my chain on because I put the clasp on. I wouldn't be able to get it through otherwise. So just go ahead and drop that in. And close up that jump ring. Make sure that's nice and uh, tight. Okay, and there's the finished piece. Boy, that varnish really makes those colors pop. And here's the here's what it looks like. I think this is so much fun. I have some other little round pendants that I've made that um, that I'll post. But isn't that pretty? I love it. I love these colors. Purple and yellow is a great color combination. Little pop of white. Really pretty. Let me know what you think. Do you like this color combo? 
I think I have something. I, I'm going to do a, a little live coming up in the not too distant future on choosing colors because I think a lot of people struggle with that and there are some ways to to get the right colors. Here's some other close-up pictures. I think the pattern's really pretty. And one more kind of top view. Hey, I want to thank you all for joining me in my studio. It's always such a pleasure to have you. Um, I do hope you subscribe. Um, if you liked the video and you want to see more, give me a thumbs up. Uh, leave me a comment. I would really love to hear what you think about the pendant series. Thanks all for joining me in my studio. Take care.